Hello there. Welcome to Just the Discs. We talk about Blu-rays here and 4Ks. And today I'm going to talk about some Kino Lorber 4Ks. I think all of these originate from Paramount in terms of a studio. And they are wide ranging. Uh, so let's start with my favorite of the bunch. And that is North Dallas 40. One of the great sports movies. Certainly maybe the best football movie ever made. Uh, starring the great Nick Nolte, as well as Mac Davis, singer <laughs> Mac Davis, who's actually really good in the movie. Uh, the cast goes on and on. You have Charles Durning as an assistant coach, Bo Svensson as an out-of-control kind of maniac player that um, is kind of scary <laughs> in parts. Um, there's some great scenes. Uh, this is based on, I want to say it's based on a novel. And... Uh, it is uh, all about football. It's it's who's the novel by? Based on the novel by Peter Gent. Um, yeah, so it's it's a really inside look, a kind of downbeat inside look at professional football, and it's so edgy in its way because it shows behind the scenes, it shows the pressure on the players and the wild parties and like the movie opens basically with Nick Nolte's character um you know so you know rough in terms of his the condition he's in that you know he can barely get up and he gets dragged by a bunch of other players to go like quail shooting or something like shooting birds basically um and then later we see them at a party and that gets really out of control women are in you know some serious <laughs> peril at that party um, but anyway so it's behind the scenes in such a way as to be very frank about this kind of lifestyle and so much so that they had to change the you know the NFL is not behind this so it, although it is obviously about the NFL like these teams are not actual NFL teams um, so that says something about how frank it is um, but yeah, you know, Steve Forrest, uh, is one of the head office guys, GD Spradlin playing one of his many coach roles. He plays a coach in a lot of movies. Dabney Coleman shows up. Um, you know, it's a really cool cast of a lot of folks you're going to recognize. Um, this is a brand new HDR Dolby vision master from a 4k scan of the 35 camera negative. Uh, the great gruff Nick Nolte stars in this brutally honest all-time classic sports film about one man's rebellion against the bureaucratic, manipulative world of professional football based on the semi-autographical novel by former Dallas Cowboy Peter Gent. North Dallas 40 depicts Nolte as an aging ball player who, through a woman he meets, played by Dale Haddon, is drawn away from the masculine, violent world in which he has lived so long. In doing so, he finds himself at odds with the team's management, management G.D. Spradlin, Charles Durning, and Steve Forrest. Superbly played by, uh, call, play called by director Ted Kotcheff, who also did First Blood and um, Wake and Fright, a very interesting Australian film. Uh, the excitement, humor, and drama of North Dallas 40 is heightened by its meticulous attention to details of a football player's private and public life and its authenticity on the playing field. Co-starring country music legend Mac Davis, Bo Svensson, and Dabney Coleman. Um, yeah, really great stuff. Two, three, five to one. This had come out from imprint films on a Blu-ray with no new scan. So this is a really nice looking new transfer. So it's, that's better. And on top of that, I think it has all the, all the extras. I think they've licensed all the extras from that disc. So you can just toss that one or sell it. Uh, it has the audio commentary by Daniel Creamer and Daniel Waters, screenwriter extraordinaire, one of the funniest people in the world in my mind. I really like him a lot. Um, with director Ted Kotcheff. So that's cool. Uh, hit me with those best shots. Ted Kotcheff remembers North Dallas 40, kind of a Zoom interview of him remembering that, and then looking to get out a comparative analysis of the Ted Kotcheff vision, as well as an introduction by Kotcheff. So all that's included in this, you have a nice slip case. You have your, um, you have your two discs, your Blu-ray, and your... Uh, 4K. I believe all the extras are on the Blu-ray except for the commentary, but very happy to see this get a domestic 4K and Blu-ray release. Uh, high, high recommend for me for North Dallas 40. Shifting gears, no pun intended. This is uh, the next movie, Changing Lanes, 
from 2002. And this one is one that I had forgotten about. Like, I had definitely seen it back in 2002 when it came out, but I had kind of forgotten it, uh, other than the fact that it, um, you know, has Ben Affleck and Sam Jackson together and that they have beef. Uh, and in fact, I've heard this is sort of a com- sort of a comparison to the Netflix show Beef and a predecessor to that in some ways. Um, so fascinating stuff. Um, but the idea basically is that uh, you have... Um, well, the back says modern society draws lines between right and wrong, good and evil, rage and redemption. A moment of self-absorption and a spark of anger will cause two men to cross them. Uh, as the battle of wills escalates, both lives are changed forever. Sam Jackson and Ben Affleck deliver gripping performances in this provocative, provocative thinking person's thriller that exposes the best and worst in all of us. Um, so the idea is basically that Ben Affleck plays an up-and-coming lawyer, at this firm he works for uh his wife's dad his wife is played by amanda pete and his dad or his father-in-law is played by Sidney pollock who's very good in this and kind of scary and upsetting in a way um and uh richard jenkins also works there uh and so he at the beginning we find out he has to go down to the courthouse and file these very specific papers that allow um power of attorney sort of or control of this really um high high value uh charity to this law firm basically this old man has died and they have this paperwork that we kind of find out later that maybe he saw he affleck got him to sign a little bit under duress when he was sick and didn't really understand what he was signing and so his um granddaughter is very upset with affleck and affleck's feeling kind of weird about it and and the more he gets into finding out about this stuff, the more he realizes he's kind of in a bad place with this comp- this law firm. So anyway, he has this important file. He's on his way to the courthouse. He gets in an accident, um, changing lanes, literally, uh, with another driver played by Sam Jackson, who is an... He sells insurance on the phone, and he is struggling with uh, alcoholism. He's in AA. He has two kids that he has sort of he's in negotiations for custody of and his wife wants to move them out of state on him this is in new york and so he's on his way to the courthouse as well um when affleck hits him uh, his car is sort of disabled and he can't drive it and he asks affleck for a ride and and while affleck's sort of pulling out his insurance he drops the file that he needs and he ends up leaving Sam Jackson and saying, like, better luck next time, like a total jerk. And he gets to the courthouse, and of course he doesn't have the papers, and then he realizes Sam Jackson has the papers, and Sam Jackson has anger issues, rightfully, uh, about this, and and they just kind of start going at each other. They start threatening each other. Um, Affleck does some really bad, lame stuff to the Sam Jackson character, which makes him sort of double down on not giving the file back. And it becomes this really interesting moral tale. Um, you know, it goes in a place that may, I don't necessarily totally love in terms of the ending ending, but I will say that regardless of that, I do find it emotionally engaging and some really powerful performances by Affleck and Jackson. Tony Collette plays a woman who works at the law firm. She's great. William Hurt is um, Sam Jackson's sponsor in AA and he's really good. Dylan Baker plays a really sleazy dude who's got a role in this as well. Uh, Matt Malloy works at a bank. You know, that's that's an interesting um, bit for him. Um, yeah, so so I really enjoyed this more than I remembered. And interestingly, it's co-written by Michael Tolkien, who wrote The Player. He wrote D- Deep Impact. He, um, he did a movie, I want to say he did a movie called the rapture that my co um podcaster uh, Elric Kane really loves so a good writer and you know able to wring a lot of drama out of this situation but i do think it's interesting the comparisons to beef that it's drawn um so this has a brand new hdr double vision master from paramount uh 4k scan from 35 camera negative um just like uh north dallas 40 
and uh, it has an audio commentary by director Roger Mitchell, Mitchell, making of Changing Lanes featurette and the writer's perspective featurette, as well as deleted and extended scenes. Again, it is a slipcase edition, and it has both a Blu-ray and a 4K included. 235 to 1 widescreen transfer looks nice. Um, yeah, good stuff. A movie that I think, again, is due for a reappraisal uh, after 22 years. Um, okay, next up, big shift of gears. We have uh, Paint Your Wagon from 1969. Now, Paint Your Wagon, just for some context, 1969 is like a watershed year for movies, especially American Hollywood films. And just to give you an idea of what's coming out, before Paint Your Wagon, which comes out later in the, in 1969. But so May 25th, uh, 1969, Midnight Cowboy is released. It's rated X. It costs $3.2 million and pulls in at like $44.8 million, And it ends up being the only X-rated film, NC-17 now, to win Best Picture. And it shows sort of the public showing signs of wanting to see different kinds of movies. I mean, this had started back in 1967 with The Graduate, which... Uh, made way more money than I remembered. Uh, the Graduate made like something like a uh, hundred million dollars on a three million dollar budget, but that was clearly an interesting movie with an odd ending. That you know, folks, young people, adults were wanting to see different kinds of movies. They were getting sick of musicals, and I'll get to Paint Your Wagon in a second. Um, so that's one thing that happens. Then uh, Sam Peckinpah's film The Wild Bunch is released in June of 1969 and while it doesn't blow the doors off in terms of box office it's part of a wave of films along with Bonnie and Clyde which I should have mentioned as another 67 film that was rated M at the time because the R rating didn't come out until 68 I don't think there's a movie called The Split that I think is the first R rated movie but it was very uh, R rated in its way because it has some incredible violence including a really violent ending um but it's sort of representing a change again in what adult moviegoers are wanting to see. They want to see real stories. They don't mind if they're downbeat. Um, violence is okay. And obviously The Wild Bunch is an incredibly violent film um, for that time, right? So that's a Western that comes out the same year, okay? Uh, and then on top of that, Easy Rider is released in July of 1969. And it is a phenomenon that Hollywood is not prepared for. It costs around 400000 and makes... $60 million or something. So that's the kind of stuff that's blowing up and taking hold in 1969. And Paint Your Wagon comes out in October of 69, and it is the studio chasing the success of uh, The Sound of Music, which had come out in 1965 and made like $286 million on an $8.2 million budget based on Broadway show. Paint Your Wagon is an epic Western musical. It's two hours and 44 minutes. It's based on a successful Broadway musical from 1951, directed by Joshua Logan, who had done Picnic, South Pacific, Bus Stop, Camelot. It costs about $20 million and it's notorious for the, you know, the overruns it had in terms of the budget. $20 million is a really expensive movie in 1969. Uh, it only returns about $31 million. So it's not the notorious flop that it's purported to be, but it definitely didn't connect with the audience in the way that it needed to. Um, and it also sort of has, is seen as a film that represents how out of touch Hollywood was with the public taste and how clearly something had to be done to shift gears and then sort of thus begins the new Hollywood. Um, Lee Marvin, of course, and Clint Eastwood star along with Gene Seberg and Ray Walston in this film. Apparently Lee Marvin was going to be in The Wild Bunch but chose this film instead and that was due in part to the script he read being an adaptation of the musical, uh, you know, play, uh, Patty Shaevsky, uh, network fame, had done a pass at the script, an adaptation, and Shaevsky is sort of known for giving actors great speeches and things like that, so I think he had added some stuff into it, probably, in my guess, I, I don't know for sure, but I would guess he had toned down some of the musical aspects of it, maybe, who knows, um, but apparently what happens is that Lee Marvin says, oh, I love this script, and he decides... And rather than being part of an incredible ensemble in Wild Bunch, he's going to be one of the lead guys in this film. And he really is more or less the lead. I mean, Clint Eastwood's kind of a second. They're, they're co-leads, I guess. But he decides, maybe it's an ego decision, I don't know. But what ends up happening is the, um, the, the 
guy named uh, Alan J. Lerner, who's of Lerner and Lowe, that did the original musical for Paint Your Wagon, um, started constantly revising the script once they'd started shooting. And even though it really bothered Marvin and Chayefsky too, who wanted to take his name, he wanted his name removed from the film because he was so displeased with how it turned out. But Marvin was kind of stuck at that point. So it just becomes a thing where, you know, forever history has changed and he's not part of the Wild Bunch, he's part of Paint Your Wagon. Um, but anyway, if you don't know what Paint Your Wagon is, again, it's an epic Western musical, a raucous Western comedy starring screen legends Clint Eastwood, who, by the way, is coming off of The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly and stuff like that, which is also an interesting transition. Um, and Lee Marvin, who had done Cat Ballou and or maybe he was about to do... No, I think he'd done Cat Ballou already. Um, Paint Your Wagon is punctuated by a classic score by Lerner and Lowe, who had done My Fair Lady and Gigi, including They Call the Wind Maria, I Talk to the Trees, and Wandering Star. Uh, the story of a gold mining boom town full of brawny men centers on the work and play partnership of prospectors Ben and Pardner, that's Marvin and Eastwood, and they share everything, the gold, the laughs, the songs, even their wife, played by the spirited Gene Seberg, who of course had done Breathless uh, a few years before. Um, it's a gold mine of 69, directed by Joshua Logan, who I mentioned, shot by William Fraker, adapted by Patty Shayefsky. So this is a brand new 4K scan of the original camera negative uh, by Paramount, I believe. Um, it doesn't say that, uh, but... Uh, looks great, obviously. It has a new audio commentary by Lee Marvin biographer Dwayne Epstein and screenwriter, author, uh, Courtney C. C. Courtney Joyner. Really great track. Definitely took some tidbits from that. Uh, a 5.1 and a 2.1 track. Um, and yeah, this is a, just a fascinating movie. And one thing I, I, in the research I discovered was that, um, you know, I mean, despite the fact that it's known that Paint Your Wagon was a chaotic almost farcical, you know, production going wildly over budget. I guess they used homeless drifters and hippies as extras after they had invaded the sets in, I think, Oregon where they were shooting. But what I didn't know was that Gene Seberg and Clint Eastwood had a passionate affair during the filming of this movie. And he later said, I adored her. But what she didn't know is his reputation in Hollywood um, was that of a guy who took a lot of mistresses, who had a lot of affairs uh, and they often only lasted throughout the production of a single film. So she was really left traumatized by, uh, you know, losing, she thought they were going to be together forever. And, and Eastwood had said the movie we were playing in was nothing special, but we enjoyed life. I adored her filming. I looked at her as an actress, but I also saw the normal person in her. She was very happy. And I don't think many got to see that. We spoke of family, friends, relationships, love, and all that. She played an important role in my life. Um, and, and again, she thought that this was going to go on after the movie and even filed for divorce from her then husband, Romain Gary. Um, and yeah, it didn't turn out well for her. So sad story. Obviously she took her own life, um, about 10 years later. Uh, she, yeah, I mean, read about her. She's truly a tragic figure in Hollywood history, but a really great actor that I've always enjoyed and I enjoy her in this film too. Um, I didn't know that about about the their affair and how she was on her second marriage and all this stuff. So anyway, there's a lot of drama behind the scenes on this one that's interesting um, and maybe more interesting than the movie itself. But it's neat to see this get a beautiful 4K. So that is Paint Your Wagon. And last but not least, we have The Manchurian Candidate. Now this is not the um, the uh, 1962 Frank Sinatra film. Uh, it is rather the uh, 2002, I, no wait, is it 2000, 2004 Jonathan Demme film. Um, and it's an interesting adaptation of the material because it's years, it says years after his, well, the, the back actually says, um, from the director of Jonathan Demme, uh, Silence of the Lambs, comes this bone chilling adaptation of the 1959 novel and 62 film of the same name. Um, Frankenheimer obviously directed that film. Uh, years after his squad was ambushed during the Gulf War, they've moved the action to the Gulf War, Major Ben Marco, that's Denzel Washington, finds himself haunted by terrible nightmares. He begins to doubt that his fellow squad mate, Sergeant Raymond Shaw, that's Liv Schreiber, uh, now a vice presidential candidate, is the hero he remembers him being. And Marco's fears deepen, Shaw's political power grows, and when Marcus finds a mysterious implant embedded in his back, uh, the bizarre memory of what really happens 
uh, begins to return. An all-star cast, including Jeffrey Wright, who, of course, was just nominated for American Fiction. Great to see him in this. It's a very small role, but a very pivotal one, and one that apparently Demi chased him down for because it has to be sort of a haunting uh, performance that sticks with you. Um, John Voight is in this. Anthony Mackie in an early role, a very small role. He was starting to take off around 2004, even then, and obviously has you know come to much more prominence since, since this film. But um, and of course, Len, Meryl Streep uh, is in this in the Angela Lansbury role. Um, so really interesting adaptation of that material, uh, written by co-screenwriter Daniel Pine who does a commentary with Jonathan Demme that I think is from the DVD, but it's still a really neat track. Interesting to hear him talk about everything from, you know, story beats to selecting Wyclef Jean to do a cover of Fortunate Son for the opening credits of the movie and stuff like that. You know, obviously music, always a big part of um, Demme's films, you know, very musical director. Uh, so this is another one that's a double disc set. You have the 4K and the Blu-ray and... Uh, Again, you have that commentary. You have the enemy within inside the Manchurian Candidate featurette. You have the cast of the Manchurian Candidate, political pundits, Leave Schreiber screen tests, deleted and extended scenes and outtakes. So a nice um, bevy of extras included here. And again, this is also a brand new HDR Dolby Vision Master from Paramount, 4K scan of the original camera negative. It looks very nice. Um, so that is it for this round of 4K discs from Kino. Again, um, North Dallas 40 gets my highest recommend. Changing Lanes, also a big recommend from me too. Uh, Paint Your Wagon and Manchurian, interesting films. Definitely, if you have an interest, they're worth picking up as the presentation is great and the extras are nice. So um, anyway, thank you so much for listening and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.